Let's just say Georgia, right? Um, we'll go through a few things. If y'all got questions, let me know. I'm going to go through varieties and a few other agronomic topics. Um, you know, like I said, chime in if you're interested. As far as, you know, decisions to make in cotton, as far as our research efforts, you know, as far as your yield, fiber quality, and a lot of things, as far as overall production, and let's be quite honest, profitability, it's related to one decision a lot of times. Variety selection is always important, but I think in cotton it's extremely important for a lot of reasons. As far as data from UGA, you know, you've got a lot of sources. You know, I encourage you to, to, to use as many sources as you can. For UGA, you've got small plot OBT data, and then you've got um, other sources. You know, we've got our own farm large plot program that we'll kind of highlight real quick uh, for you. As far as our own farm program, if you hadn't heard about it before, we basically work with seed companies to come up with a set of varieties to look at each year. That set of varieties is determined by you know, which varieties you guys are going to be able to plant, which ones have done well, um, and, and which ones we're kind of interested in looking at. We take that set, and then we take that seed and work with our county agents. We have a few of them in here, and our county agents work with you guys and, and farmers and put this uh, these set of varieties on a lot of locations. We're doing large plot, strip trial, replicated research. As far as the set of varieties we looked at this year, we had 12. You guys can see that list there. It's in alphabetical order. We got entries from uh, you know, several different seed companies, and you know, as far as variety selection goes, there's you know we're making a lot of decisions based on yield potential, but honestly, we're starting to see more and more options from a standpoint of technology. So there seems to be there's starting to be more options and a little bit of difference there. So just kind of want to show you that um, from the standpoint of the rise we looked at this year. Of course, all of them had a glyphosate tolerant trait. Uh, Ten to twelve this year had a glufosinate tolerant trait. Whether it's Liberty Link, or it's from the Extend Technology, or it's Wide Strike Cotton. Um, you got, we had five dicamba varieties we looked at this year, and then we actually had two Southern Root Knot Nematode varieties. Um, one, if you heard the seed company saw one with one gene and one with two gene uh, resistance. As far as that program goes, we try to plant the varieties in as many locations as we can um, for two reasons. One, it's good to see uh, how varieties perform in different areas, but more importantly, you know, as far as trying to capture as much data as you can in one year, it's really important to try to look at variety performance over a lot of different environments. So, you know, if you think about weather and seasons in southwest Georgia, it can be totally different than southeast Georgia and so forth. So having all these different locations, which you can see those locations, uh, the counties in gray there, allows us to capture a lot of different environments and, and see how those varieties perform across those different ones. Planted 24 last year. I think we got 19 we got data from uh, we would show you the data for you seen it you see me and guy talk about variety data and, and guys kind of always showing you know one of these kind of charts that I think it's kind of one of those things you can as a kid it's like a poster and you cross your eyes and go in and out and all of a sudden some kind of thing jumps out at you I don't want you looking at any numbers I just want to make a couple points you're looking at each individual yield from each variety across those 19 locations and I want to show it to you for a couple reasons one is is if you look at uh, locations, we got them from 1 to 19. They're sorted from lowest trial average yield to highest trial average yield. The reason I point that out is you're looking at performance of these varieties in a lot of different environments. I think basically the whole spectrum of cotton production in Georgia. You got a little more than bale cotton, all the way up to three bale plus cotton. So this program captures a lot of different uh, environments and can look at stability of varieties and, and performance of varieties over a lot of locations. As far as Looking at the data from last year, you know, we look at data a lot of different ways. You're, you're looking at the, uh, the performance of these varieties, and we've got them ranked by length, uh, average length yield across those 19 locations, sorted from high to low. Um, and, you know, if you think about average, da you know, average data, to me, the more locations you have, probably the more weight it should carry, you know, from a, from a common sense standpoint. And you know, we can use statistics to compare those varieties a lot of different ways, but a couple things to point out. If you look at, you know, the performance of these varieties based on average length yield, you can see that, you know, there's some differences there. But if you look at the difference between number 1 and 12, I'm not good at math, but what do you see? It's about 200 pounds, right? Um, and, and a couple of things to point out there. One is if you've got 19 locations and you've got all those different environments, the differences you do see are a lot more likely to be apparent or more likely to be significant. And then from a common sense standpoint, we've done this program for, I think, five years now. And that difference between the top and the bottom has gotten more and more narrow. So as far as variety selection, I think that means you've got more varieties that potentially can do well for you 
And I think that's what we see there. As far as statistical analysis, you can look at it different ways. Just one snapshot of that. Um, looking at using, looking across all locations, you know, we had six varieties that were statistically uh, similar <coughs> across all all locations, um, and you can see some differences there. The, the story for me on cotton varieties is, you know, thinking about it from a, a grower standpoint, you could plant these 12 and probably plant 10 more, plant them on your farm, and in the right situation, make some really good cotton. Um, and I think that can happen, um, and that's a good thing for us. Are all these varieties created equal? I, I don't think so, and I think the difference we see there is not necessarily the potential of these varieties, but the consistency of these varieties. Some are just more consistent than the others, and you think about how we grow cotton from a standpoint of so many different situations, even within a farm. You know, you got a, a farm or a field that could have bale cotton in it, it could have three bale cotton. So being consistent is important for us. So a couple ways to look at that. Um, you've got these five columns here that are basically percentages that are indicators of you know, consistent performance. And, and different columns mean different things. In this column, you've got the percent of time a variety finished above the trial average. You've got in this column the percent of time a variety finished in the top four numerically of 12, 3, 2, and how often it numerically won the trial, right? Bottom line is, as you can see, that there's some varieties that are very consistent and some varieties that are just less consistent. Um, and so I think that's one way to look at it. As far as this data goes, we'll have this um, on the cotton webpage, uh, ugacotton.com. When we get it, we're getting the last of the OBT data in. Hopefully it'll be here in a day or two. We got one or two more locations and then we'll have this data and the OBT data summarized and put on the website for you. And you can also get it from your county agent if you need it. We do this program every year. Um, and, I, and the reason I point that out is, you know, the more information you can use, the better. But more importantly, you know, we talk about variety selection all winter and then it becomes a question of buying seed and thinking about what are you gonna plant. Most of us have a common question or a simple question. Which variety is better than another? You know, I got two or three to pick from. Which one's the best option, right? So to do that, you know, if you call me, I look at a lot of variety data, but I might scratch my head and go back and look at things and try to do some math in my head and make some decisions, and it may be a good one. But one thing you can do on your own, and I encourage you to try this, is to use our, it's a, it's a bad name, but it's a, a name of the UGA Cotton Variety Performance Calculator. Basically what we did is, about four or five years ago, I basically started a database of all the UGA variety trials, whether OBT or large plot, put a big database together, and we came up with this way to compare varieties. And what's unique about it is it basically allows you to compare varieties across all the trials where those varieties were tested. So for example, you know, you can look it up to five varieties and, and click some parameters there. It basically pulls up just the trials where those all the varieties you're interested were uh, planted. Just for an example, you can see this here. This was something I did a couple years ago. We pulled two varieties and wanted to compare them. If you, you probably can't see the numbers here, but there were 61 trials where those two varieties had been planted head to head, and there was about uh, about 100 pounds difference between. Them, right. So to me, that's an easy way to, to make a quick decision and, you know, and get some more information and kind of make it more simple from the standpoint of variety selection because it, it can be quite complicated um, from that standpoint. A couple other things to point out from you know last year's stuff and thinking about cotton in general, you know we had dicamba cotton that got released this year. As far as you know acres planted and, and adoption of that we did from USDA report we had about 200,000 acres of those varieties planted uh, last year, so it was interesting to see how that technology performed for, in a launch year. And if you think about new technologies, I'm probably not politically correct saying this, but every time I think we get a new technology or trade, what seems to happen? Besides, you got to pay more for it, right? I think you call it yield drag, or whatever you want to call it, right? I think it's, it's probably a lot of things. It's probably more complicated than I understand, but it's probably just a, due to breeding efforts. They right? kind of happen to start over from that standpoint. So how did those varieties perform in that technology work this year? You know, XF means it's that trait, and then, you know, the number one, three, four, seven, and 12 varieties have that trait. So the top and the bottom, um, but if you look at the top four, three of those had that trait. What does that mean? You know, I think we can take several things from it. Um, 
most importantly, I think, is you know the, the new technology. We've got some varieties in the launch year that were good. That's good for you guys. But on a big scheme of things, if you think about all the new traits we've seen, and, and honestly, my skepticism of our ability to, to have a new variety that can do well with a new trait, this is a good thing, right? It's the, I feel like it's the first year we've seen a new trait and we haven't lost something. Now, why that is this year, like I said, above my pay grade. But uh, there's been some major advancements as far as breeding. I mean, you can talk to the seed companies about that. Again, I understand some of it. But it, in general, I think this is a good thing. Because if you think about cotton varieties and, and thinking about the next 10 years, how many new traits have we got coming? I think everybody's got two or three, right? So we, we, we're going we're gonna to keep moving, and I think it's a good thing that, you know, maybe we won't see that and we'll have some good uh, options to choose from. Other thing to mention is the nematode issue. Kim Wright's going to talk about diseases and nematodes, but as far as battling nematodes, you guys know the different options you have. You know, as far as varieties go, you know, as far as the data goes this year, uh, this variety had root knot nematode <coughs> resistance and it had two genes and it did pretty good in our trials. Um, and so that's something to consider. And 49, 46 is, is there. And, and in all honesty, in earlier environments, and honestly, the further north you go, typically the better you see that variety perform. So those are just some options for you. Last thing I'll mention is, you know, with, the, with our belt tightening, which mine needs to tighten more than it is, we're always trying to think of ways to save money. I get more questions about conventional varieties than, than I, you know, when prices are low. Um, what I've done here is basically got some data looking at conventional variety performance in the OVTs over the past few years. Don't want to get too involved in it. Long story short, if you're going to plant conventional cotton, I think there's a very good chance you're going to take a hit on yield potential. And how big that hit is, you can kind of do some math and think about that. Um, you're probably not going to be able to get the, as good a yield as you could with some of our better transgenic varieties. Does that mean I say you shouldn't plant conventional cotton? No. But I think it's important to, before we think about doing that, to think about management. One, can you do it? Can you spray your entire crop in three days? Another is, is how much money you're going to save up front and, and kind of pencil it out that way. There are some significant savings up front. I don't want to, you know, bash the conventional varieties that much. And, you know, some of these have some very good fiber quality packages. So, you know, it's worth considering. I just want to make sure everybody's aware of that. PGRs, you know, we can talk a lot about PGR management. For me, it's been how do we manage all these new varieties we've never seen before? How do we make decisions, um, you know, with new varieties and that kind of thing? I mean, we could talk a lot about the difference for PGRs. The thing I want to show you is I think most of you guys, if you've seen our stuff, you've seen this really complicated, nasty looking handout chart that I've got, right? This is the same chart I've been using for several years. Basically, it's a relative PGR requirement for cotton varieties. And what I've done is built on, a, a, built on this idea for several years. And rather than talk about managing a particular variety one way versus the other, what we've done is trying to try to classify varieties based on growth potential and maybe PGR needs. So what you're looking at here is just that. Not yield potential or anything like that, but just ideas on management as far as growth regulators. So just to make sure you understand, we've got kind of four classes that I kind of came up with. You know, initially when I did this, this is based on research that I do each year where we grow as many cotton varieties I can get my hands on with no PGRs, a moderate strategy and then a, re, a you know, very aggressive strategy. And we, we kind of see where there's kind of four basic groups. If you're thinking about management, these varieties at the top are going to be your most aggressive. From a management standpoint, you know you're going to have to spray more than once. You're going to have to be timely in your follow-up applications and you're going to have to start before bloom, right? The ones in the next class are very similar to those. I think if you're in a dry land environment, you may have to be cautious on the first application, maybe lower that rate, and you may not have to start as early. These in this group, I feel like in most cases, if you hadn't lost something as far as fruit retention, you can wait a little later in the year, maybe even to bloom. And then as far as PGR management, these down at the bottom, you know, are gonna, gonna have less need for management as far as timeliness and probably starting early. In a lot of cases, if you get good fruit set, I think you can do a fairly good job managing it without any picks at all. Um, so as far as the rise for this year, 
We're going to include those. I've got those now. This slide is the last year's slide, um, and we can it will be on our website too. Everybody understand that? 1558. 1558. I ain't got it in there, but it's going to be up here. Can you agree? Yeah, I put 1454 in the top of the two. Yeah. So, like I said, the reason I had 1454 here, I, I think last year when I had it, I think what happened was, is, you know, as far as potential, it had it, but then as far as where we switched it, you know, using some aggressive rates, you know, it, was a bit, it dropped in ranks. So you know, either of these, just those are close. Last thing to mention as far as research is seed rates and plant populations. Um, you know, we're spending a lot of money on a cotton crop and we want to make sure we maximize yields. We know cotton seed is expensive and in Georgia, we plant fewer seed than anybody in the country, right John? So. We have spread it out as far as it'll go. Um, and we're doing that for a logical reason. Cotton seed is a, we, we, we pay for the bag, we don't pay for the acre, right? So we, we, in Georgia, we've had the opportunity to stretch seed rates, and we've done it. And we've got data to prove that what we're doing has been good. And so as far as you know, our recommendations on seed rates, you know, we've thought that two seed per foot is kind of where we need to be and we're as low as we can go to be okay. And we've seen in the past that one plant per foot is decent as far as maximizing yields. Um, as far as going back and revisiting that, I got data from 12 trials over the past three years, looking at different seeding rates, plant populations, varieties, all sorts of different things. We don't have time to get through all of it, but what I want to show you is just kind of the, my kind of common sense and kind of <coughs> come, come, come with this. And this is important to say, if you're trying to maximize cotton yields, you're spending all this money, irrigation, you're putting everything you can in the cotton crop to maximize yields. Our data says that you have to have at least one and a half, more likely to be confident, 1.75 plants per foot of row to not lose yield potential. All right? Now, we're talking about anywhere from 100 pounds or more. It's statistical when you can see a lot of these different trials, but that was the common thread. So, what do we say about seed rates? That's plant populations, right? We don't plant populations, we plant seed, right? Most people have said, would well, you want me to plant more seed? Well, no. What I want us to consider is what does it take to get that? And if you think about us planting cotton in Georgia, we start in April and plant in June, and there's no telling what kind of environment we're going to plant in, there's no telling what kind of conditions we're going to have. The thing is, is we're going to have a lot of differences in germ. So my encouragement to you is if you're going to make you know, an effort to think about this, Think about your production system. Think about what kind of stands you're getting. And for me, I know I've walked a lot of fields, and I just felt like in a lot of cases, we may not we may not be getting that. Um, and just will make you guys think about it. You know, as far as getting a stand to get one and a half from two, you've got to have what 75 percent turn. Is that right? Yeah. I can it really about 75 percent somewhere, somewhere in that neighborhood. Right. What do you? What's out of the bag? 85, 90, right? I mean, we're getting every bit of 90% of that. We are in some cases, but in some cases we may not, right? I just want you to think about that. Another thing is as far as when you plant. I know for me, I used to pick a seeding rate, keep the same seeding rate and start in April and keep the same one until I put the planters up, right? We've got data that shows if planting date affects that. From the standpoint is if you're planting later in the year, a thicker stand or a good stand is more important as far as yield potential. And common sense from what we've seen from the data, if you're planting in June, I'd, I'd make sure I planted more, I'd, have, I'd plant more two seed per foot, I really would. Probably more like two and a half. Probably need two seed, two plants per foot. Um, so that's another thing. Varieties were interesting. You know, we looked at different varieties in these trials and it was unique from the standpoint of some were very unresponsive to senior rates and plant populations from a standpoint of we know cotton can compensate. You know, 499 was, was one of the rides we included a lot. You know, in some of the trials I saw no difference in yield from one plant per two foot of row to three plants per foot of row. Right? It could compensate. And from the other standpoint, some rides were very responsive from the standpoint of you could make more yield by getting a better stand. Does that make sense? Um, the challenge will be is, well, how do we 
relate that to what we're doing in the farm and that kind of thing. We're going to try to come up with some ideas on that, but in general, I think your more early varieties, your more compact growers, are more likely going to respond to a better, higher seeding rate than those that are more full season and that have uh, heavier growth potential. Does that kind of make sense? John, you might mention this. So this, this is just another thing we're talking about as far as yield potential. And, you know, we're thinking about as far as making good yields. Some work, John, this is I stole the slide from John, but especially looking at yield potential over planting dates. We plant cotton from April to, some of us plant March till almost July, right? It does matter. The trick with cotton is we can compensate for so many different things. And we can make good cotton later in the year, but what would this data show? What would you say about planting date if you were to look at this graph? If you plant later in the year, your potential may not be quite as good, right? So, I mean, as far as trying to maximize yield, especially when we have the potential to push yields, is something to think about and, and you know, consider. Um, I think that's all I got. I will mention, you know, as far as varieties go, John, what you say as far as the biggest two factors is variety and mother nature, right? As far as carbon quality. Varieties, I think your table is set with your variety as far as what you can get, and then your management plays a role, and then Mother Nature can can tear up what we did, right? And if you think about this year, that's what happened. As far as looking at historical data, fiber quality is worse this year than it's been. I've gone back, I think I got 17 years, I went back and looked at data. It's worse this year than it has been in a long time. Why? Think about the rainfall we had, right? Um, we had four colors and grades. As far as bark goes, we've actually, you guys remember the bark issue in 2012 where 12% of our crop had bark? Luckily, we've just gotten lower and lower each year. The big one this year was that we had 5.2% uh, of, of prep, and then we also had about 4% of seed coat fragments. And so that seed coat fragment is a new thing that as far as the, the, the fiber class and all of making, they hadn't seen that high in a long time. So something to consider. But if you look at the trends, we are going to better fiber quality. We got better fiber quality in Georgia, um, and things are really moving. If you look at uniformity, that's, that's a good story in my opinion. Um, <laughs> something to think about. Strength is better, and, and length is good too. So I think I'll leave it at that. Are we done on time? Oh, you got 10 minutes. Yeah. Do you have anything you want to talk about? Any questions or comments?